brown algae and there are red algae. The red algae is the most diverse group. So there's over 300 species that you'll commonly find you know, on, on the seashore, but they're also the, one of the hardest to identify. And a lot of the species, they don't have a common name. They only have a Latin name. And they're very, very similar. And they're almost, you need a microscope basically to look at the reproductive organs of them to be able to tell a lot of them apart. You know, it's not, it's not worth getting into detail over those. Um, but what you'll find is the green algae, they contain chlorophyll, just like the higher plants that you find on land. They will inhabit the higher, sort of, the higher part of the coast um, because they need to be able to absorb light that's coming down through the water. Um, the water looks blue, therefore, you know, it's going to be reflecting certain, certain um, wavelengths of light. What, then what you find are the red and the green algae, uh, the red and the brown algae a bit further down. They also contain chlorophyll, the same as the green algae, but they also, I can't think of what the pigments are called at the moment, the, the, brown, the brown and the red. Um, Carotenoids. Carotenoids, yeah. Which, browns or the... They're, they're like the red oranges. Oh, right. All that sort yeah. of... Yeah. Well, the, the red and the brown algae, they still contain chlorophyll, but it's just masked out by the other colours. Um, ask me some questions about something. So if you, I don't know what can, just can you... Can, just on that one rock there, so that's what I said, if you went around the back there and sort of face this way, that one rock I can see some red, some brown and some green on there, so if we talk... But I know desiccated, this is 35% protein. Wow. Yeah, it's really, really high in protein. Wow. It's also very, very, a lot of the seaweeds you'll find, they're very high in iodine. They have a lot of minerals in them. Um, they are slightly subject to, <coughs> to absorbing heavy metals. So when you're foraging, you have to look at, you know, you have to look at your surroundings. You have to pick somewhere that's not estuarine, you know, it's not near river yeah. runoff, it's mm. not near a shipping yard. It's shipping not, stuff. you know, yeah. yeah. You want to find somewhere on an mm. open coastline that's clean. You know, you can speak to locals. Promoting. Will that discolour the, you know, when you see, if it is polluted, will it discolour it or will it be exactly what you see in there? Sometimes you can see, if you see any sort of film. Yeah, like a water, froth. Yeah, or a froth, froth sometimes, but you do get a protein scum that's... Landfall. <laughs> you can get a protein scum, which is not inherently any sort of problem. Um, it's not but the, it's yeah. You can it's, kind of stay away from yeah. You look You'll be able to find wrong, places like. that you can, you know, mm. you can look at and think these look good. Um, so with that dulse, you say it's thirty-five percent protein when desecrated. Yeah, by weight. Right. Thirty-five grams of a hundred grams yeah. of dry seaweed. Obviously, a lot of the weight at the moment is going to be water in it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you dry that stuff then. Yeah. You, you you could do. It's it's perfectly good just to eat like that. Um, you can taste it like. Yeah. You know what I was saying about the finger test about if you can crush it between your fingers, it's yeah. quite good to be able to eat them raw. Whereas if something you can't break out of your hands, would probably benefit from being cooked, you know, to help sort of right. with a maceration. Nibble. So if I can't break that up? But it's, it's it, it, have a little nibble. I mean, it, it's, yeah, it, 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 you can kind of just about break that one up. Tom, I was, I was it's wondering. It's still okay raw, that one. The, the rocks I'm seeing and sat on, yeah. yeah. Is that going to influence, obviously going to influence the type of vegetation so nice. likely to see, is it or not? Or is it to do with the, the where the coast comes in? It's pretty way? much to do with the depth of water right. and how turbulent the, the environment's going to be. You it's know. not going to affect the There'll populations? Be so, no. All, all most of the marine algae need is a solid substrate you know, to fasten onto. Um, do they extract minerals at all from the substrate? Not from the substrate, no. From the water? Just from the water, yeah. yeah, yeah. But obviously water that's around certain rocks will be higher concentration of yeah. those minerals. You're so talking about substrate, is that, it, what, it, is, what is the substrate? Is that just well, the ground that we're on? Yeah, it's the ground. There's, there's, th there's, th there's first, three, there? yeah, no, it's what you can see, what you literally. See? There's, they generally divide the coast up into three main types. That's <clears> mud, <throat> sand, and rock. Rock you will look for m mostly because it's the, it's the most diversity of species you yeah. can find. Um, Second is mud. Uh, there's a high. How do you describe it? There's. There's something to cling to. In the mud, there's high yeah. biomass of animal, 
but it's not very diverse. It'll all be polychaete and oligochaete worms, some bivalves and stuff. Whereas sand, very, very poor. If you have, if you've only got big sandy beaches, then you're going to be, you know, you can find maybe razor clams, cockles, some bivalves, but in general terms of foraging, it's quite. It's quite poor. You want to look for rocky headlands. You can like it like a desert, really, can't you? Yeah, it's like very some much people, so, yeah. mm. some in, creatures can't live, but there are a few that can survive. Yeah. So it's like the desert underneath the ocean bed. Yeah. Some good, some not. Yeah. Cool. Um, what we've got here, you might all recognise this. It's one of the more common, yeah, yeah. more common seaweeds. It's ulva, ulva. which is sea lettuce. They sea call lettuce. this. Okay. Read that raw. Yeah. Well, it's probably worth mentioning that out of the hundreds and hundreds of species of seaweed there are, or I say I say seaweeds as a loose term because they're generally algae. They're not right. a type. They're not a plant. No. But this they're stuff is more of a seaweed, whereas yeah, that no. is more of an algae. No, they're no. No, they're all they're all algae. All algae. Yeah. Um, these, are, these, are, these are uni uh, uh, These are uni. Um, yeah, is um it, within plants you've got that vascular system we talked about earlier, the phloem and the xylem. These don't have that, and really that was one of the big things that the higher plants are differentiated from. Um, I mean, like you've got your mosses and what have you, mm. but they're also differentiated because they don't have the flowering organs to like the, the flowering plants. So these are sort of like yeah, step down again on the evolutionary ladder here. See, these type of things, they taste better boiled. I've got to soften, surely. Yeah, they, they go as well cooked, but also just toasted alongside a fire and dried to be taken as a snack for carrying. Um, they toast up really great. Um, things like lava is what they make sushi nori, and they're the black seaweed that they use in sheets to make um, sushi. They're like Californian rolls. Um, it's, it's used a lot of seaweed in, in loads of different things, you know. I've but never seen it, if you could find lava it. Lava bread? Yeah, you but I've never seen it. But you've never seen it, no. no. Yeah. I've only seen it behind the counter, I've oh, never right. seen it. No, we'll have a... There's a seaweed I've noticed, they're probably going off track, tell me if no, they're not. No, there's no they've off got track. Little, they've got little bulbs and you can squeeze them and they yeah. burst. Oh, yeah. Bladder rack. Bladder rack. Bladder rack. Yeah. They took, what those are, they're... That, that, what, that, well, that bladder rack coming underneath, no? These are bladders, but these are in... Serrated. Say that that's yeah, either channel rack or serrated. Channel, rack. sorry, that is, yeah. Um, but the bladders, they're floats. They're oh, to help right, the plant. They're yeah, to help the plant raise up yeah, and out and out compete anything that's growing below it, so Good they can grief. get to the light. That's awesome. So, um, um, you know, inside that stuff is obviously squirted out. It's just salt water. In here, air. Yeah, oh, air. yeah it's literally it's air. Yeah, if you have, you have, on know, the bladder rack that you're talking about is the ones with the great big round yeah. blistered balls yeah. in. Um, same family as the rack. Yeah. Great. If you find a big one of those, just snip it off either side. It makes yeah. a really great fishing float. Awesome idea. Yeah. Yeah. You can also tell the, there's one there's one one type of rack that you can tell the age of it because they only they only produce one new pair of bladders every year. <laughs> So if right. you can count seven sets of blood, you know. It's like seven. eccentric rings, like. Yeah. yeah. Most brown algae, they only live for up to three years, yeah. but. But this one that produces the bladders every every year can be 50, they've recorded fifteen year old.